Zap Proxy and Burp Suite Proxy have a lot of features that are helpful when used in combination. So for example, if you wanted to use Zap's force browsing feature, but then run some operation from Burp Suite on the pages found by Zap, you can actually chain the two proxies together so that each one of them can learn from the other. So in this example, we'll chain the Zap proxy through the Burp proxy. So to start with, we need to make sure the browser is going to send our request to the Zap proxy. So we'll start Zap and make sure that that part of it is set up. So Zap we have configured to run on port 8081. So over here in proxy selector, I'm going to choose 8081. If you don't have Proxy Selector or Foxy Proxy or some other proxy tool, you can also set up the proxy manually in Firefox's proxy settings. The key is to make sure the port that you're sending your request to is the same port that Zap is listening on for the connection. So we're running Zap here on our local machine, so we're going to use localhost as our IP and 8081 as our port. This number is not important except to the extent that you don't pick a number being used by some other program and the number should be bigger than 1024. So if we go over here to Zap and click on the gear icon or you can go to tools and options and then go down to the local proxies. We're just verifying that we are listening on localhost and port 8081. So now we have a connection between Burp or between Firefox and Zap, but we haven't got a connection yet through Burp, which is going to be our second proxy. So if we go over here to the connection area and scroll down in the options, we can use a proxy chain. Now we have to be mindful of what port Burp is running on. So first, Let's get started with Burp. This happens to be Kali Linux, so there's a shortcut for Burp. If you've installed Burp, there should be a shortcut on your desktop, or you can just start the program from the command line. So once you start Burp, you're going to go to the Proxy tab and look at the options. And we're going to verify what port Burp is listening on. It's also listening on localhost because we're running it locally and it's running on 8080. So we're going to go back over to Zap and make sure that the outgoing proxy server, sometimes this is called the upstream proxy server, but in Zap it's called outgoing, is localhost and 8080. So now we have Firefox sending traffic to port 8081 where Zap is listening. Zap is sending its traffic to port 8080 where Burp is listening. Burp will forward the traffic onto the web server. So we'll go back over to the browser and we'll visit a page. In this case, the home page. So let's look at Zap. So in Zap, the site is shown up. And now we go look at Burp. Go to Targets. And over here in Burp, the site is shown up as well. We'll go ahead and add it to Scope. And then hiding it, any other information by showing in scope items only, uh, make it less confusing to look at the output. Now we'll go back to Zap and look at how the two tools can work together. So we're just going to pick the spidering and forced browsing options as our demo. So on the Matilda Day site, on the index.php page, I'm going to right click and say attack and spider. We'll start the spider tool running and it'll begin to visit the different pages. Now if we go over to Burp and look at what's happening here, we'll notice that as Zap spiders the site through Burp, Burp learns about the pages and populates them in the menu. We can see this a bit more clearly if we go to Proxy and History because you'll notice that the pages are actually showing up in the history.
So another attack we can do with that is we can do the four sprouts. So if we right click, say attack and four sprouts. In this case, we'll pick directory. Usually you would probably pick directory and children, but it'll take a bit longer to run. So we'll pick directory, and then in the list, we'll pick the default. All right, and once we get the forced browsing started, you'll see Zap is guessing at page names from this directory list. And if you go look in Burp and look at the history, you'll actually see some of this activity. So if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see the different guesses that are being made by Zap as it tries to figure out what pages might be in the site. So this is a good example of how to chain Zap into Burp to use some of the features in Zap that are useful during penetration tests, but then be able to use the information found in Burp Suite.